Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season three premiere of Upload. Great season premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, let's start off with Nathan and Nora's side of things. Um, obviously, poor Nora having that nightmare. Um, with Nathan, I figured the moment he started bleeding from his ear, I was like, okay, this is a, this is a, I'm like, would y'all really have time to go back to your place and just be doing all this making out? It's like, don't you have a mission? And it's like, well, it turns out, okay, once again, it was all a dream, but it's like, that's still traumatic because even she's worried about it. Cause I was wondering, cause Nathan probably hasn't let her know like the issues that have arisen. Like, we saw in the season two finale, his nose is bleeding. So it's already happening. God knows how long he has because they had this little back and forth in the episode, which I thought was kind of sweet where she's like, she loved to have like a month, you know, it's like, but maybe we could have more than that. But even he's like, yeah, but maybe we'd even have less than that. They don't have the other guy lasted maybe a few minutes before his head popped. Nathan's been going for hours now, but we don't know how long he has. So it's not going to last forever. I can I can only assume that this Nathan will die by the end of this season. Most likely we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But I love the whole Mateo and um Nathan element of just like rubbing in his face it's like oh yeah you're a dead man you're oh I should call you zombie pretty boy oh I love brains it's like yeah but it must suck that the uh most beautiful woman you've ever been with ended up leaving you for a dead guy so it's got to rub it got to sting a little bit he's like Mateo didn't have any retort for that but I also love the entire time he's just like yeah, so, uh, you know, Nathan and, I mean, Nathan dies, like, it'll be you and me again. And she's like, really, we're not having this conversation. He's like, sorry, sorry. But really, we should think about it. I mean, we were so good together. We made such a great team. I, 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 you're just like, man, Mateo is such a dick because he's trying to do this. It's like, yeah, don't worry. He'll be dead in a week and then we can, we can make us work. We were so good together, our history and everything. And then later on being like, well, yeah, you and your boyfriend. And Nora's like, not my boyfriend. He's like, yeah, well, we're boyfriend, but kind of figuring things out and she's like no so and even when he's dying jumping ahead a little bit it sucks a lot that it's like despite him dying she's like don't worry buddy he's like buddy really i'm literally dying and you can't even give me like it's like nah the last thing you were here before dying is her calling you buddy it, it actually does suck like he's a douchebag but i do legitimately feel bad for mateo because he did have feelings for Nora, and it's just well, it's just like that the feelings, the unrequited love, not even unrequited, that I guess almost forbidden love. I wouldn't even call it forbidden. It just was uh, an impossible love. It was just a complicated situation. It's uh, it's like a, a love for the ages, you know? It's one of those storytell type of loves her and Nathan have. And it just, you can't kind of compare it. Uh, to be fair, she was in love with Nathan before you. You were kind of sadly a rebound, you know? So you do legitimately feel bad for Mateo just, you know, dying. It's like, well, at least if you get uploaded... I was like, yeah, but that'd be an issue if he ends up getting uploaded and then kind of gets put, well, where would he go? They, someone would have to pay for him being in Lakeview, most likely. And it's like, would you even be able to do that without any, raising any suspicion? But I, I don't know. But I thought like, oh, we'll talk about it, but the other Nathan, it'd be interesting if you're trapped in Lakeview with him. So that would have been a whole shenanigan thing if you wanted to keep Mateo around. But it's like, nah, he's dead, dead, which... That's actually heartbreaking. It's like, oh man, I always think that's so interesting when you're like, oh yeah, this character, yeah, who might have been recurring previous seasons or a season or so, in Mateo's case, a recurring character from last season, oh, yeah, let's murder him in the first uh, episode of the season. It's like, oh, that sucks. Uh, but other elements of that is that um, it is interesting that we learn Nathan's not good under pressure, which is so interesting considering all the shenanigan field things they've kind of got mixed up in, all the low-key secret stuff they've had to do. Season 1 and Season 2, he's so bad at being under pressure. Like, this lady caught them when they were pretending to be um, custodians working at uh, uh, Freon, and um, the lady was like, oh, I never recognized you two before. And then Nora came up with this story about, like, oh, yeah, like, I was stuck between two siblings, one that's you know, the prodigy everyone loves, and then me uh, being kind of the failure, and the other one being sick and in the hospital all the time. They always got the attention, but I did. And Nathan's like, oh, I didn't know anything of that about you. And Nora's like, you idiot. It's not real. She didn't actually say that. She just looked at him like he's an idiot, so I think we can infer. Well, we know she does have a sister, right? So, I, But I think everything else was like BS. I mean, that's also the thing about stuff. It's like you never quite... There's always going to be a little truth sprinkled in, um, but... You know, but the rest of it was like BS. But that's how you sell a lie. You bring some truth to it. So Then we find out uh, that Choke isn't the only one who's um, 
at the heart of all of this. He is working with a whole, essentially a cabal of evil billionaires to make this happen. In fact, one of them is um, Horizon's head honcho. I think it was even like, oh, Horizon's head honcho's boss was also there as well. So, boss's boss was there, you know. So, but all these people have gathered because of their um, dastardly evil plan. And we ultimately end up finding out what that plan is, which is actually really depressing and sad. The, the plan, because I, I wasn't quite fully sure how they were going to swing the Freon thing, um, how they were going to swing that. Because I knew it was about votes and stuff, but it's about taking away people's votes. Because their plan is to basically upload all these people, make them think they're going to be stuck on this like Freon server. But it's like, no, they're going to come up with a BS story of, oh, the LUDs attacked, all these people are lost, all those people are dead, and that means 10,000, well, not even 10,000, 10 million less votes in the world. And that means you, you have a lot more sway because obviously people who are like on the poor end, not even just the poor end, but the middle class and poor will just not vote the way you want them to. So you kind of swell a lot of the power and get more people voting the way you need them to because people who need to afford Freon aren't, go aren't going to be like of the higher class to be able to uh, pay for something like Horizon and stuff like that. So it's like, oh, well, we'll kind of be able to sway elections the way we want to. It's like we're getting large, getting rid of a, a social a social group such as like poor people or maybe even people on the somewhere in the middle class, whether it's middle middle class or lower middle class. We're getting rid of all of those millions of people, and it gives us a lot more sway and power. And they also get to blame it all on the LUDs. I mean, the LUDs actually made it easier for them because they attacked Horizon earlier. Um, in this, uh, obviously they attacked him last season. So that was probably always the plan to use the LUDs as the scapegoats, but that probably just helped them even more, um, expedite, uh, it'd be like, oh, like this helps sell it even more. I mean, because I think it was publicly known that they attacked Horizon. I, I mean, at least we know everyone at Horizon's aware of it, but I don't know if the, I, I, I kind of sworn I vaguely remember the news covering the LUD attack, but maybe I'm completely wrong and only like horizon only are the only ones who know about it no one else does but either way it's so sad too because at that time it's like we're seeing um viv kind of getting ready for freon as well as she brings i can't remember home dude's name they said in the episode he's the dude that viv went to when they were trying to find a new place for nathan um last season they were checking out places he was one of the people and viv's like oh like hey you were trying to offer nathan a place you helped show us around so here uh you can jump ahead of line with me and luckily they didn't go through with it so they're still alive it is a whole thing of hey you signed up so you kind of have to go through with it they have to be paid off or something because it's like when people are like yeah i don't want to do this anymore that they kind of removed consent from it. Now they have changed their mind, but the people are like, nah, we have to keep going through with it. I'm like, either they're like legally bound to do that, or like I said, they're being paid to do it. Probably, I guess it's just, they're just that dedicated to their job of like, yeah, we have to go through with it. Just, it seems like if people are second guessing and not wanting to do this, I mean, you see people getting these recordings being like, oh yeah, this is all BS. Hey, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. You would think you would get it too. So that's why I'm like, I don't know if they've all been paid off and they're a part of all of this as well. But because I was worried, I was like, I didn't think it was going to happen. I mean, as we can see, like these people are uploaded on drives. There's just nowhere to put them. There's no actual free on uh, free on to actually put them there. But so I was like, if Viv ended up that way, it's still a thing of Nathan could get her. But it's still a sad thing of like, right? Um, Nathan's niece would miss her, and it'd be all BS. But at least it's like she'd still be alive, but obviously when they were all said and done, they were just going to destroy all those drives regardless, so it's like, why keep them around? Like, sell the lie by making it true of like, oh yeah, all these lives were destroyed, they had to make sure there's no like, no bit of them ever left, so that you can sell that lie even more, so. I also love the whole Detective Sato thing. I love that he's like, hey, Nathan Brown. They're like, wait, can you actually get out of there? He's like, yes, I want, I can. I just don't think it's worth it. And they're like, are you stuck? And she's like, he's like, no, I'm not stuck. And I love that. Like, right. If you want to look into the murders and tie that assassin to David Cho. Oh, the Yankees knew short, uh, someone on the team. And it's like, no, the dead billionaire. He's like, oh. 
That makes more sense. At first, I was happy because I was like, hey, we're getting a more sillier side because our scenes with it. I mean, we had one silly scene with him, but everything was pretty like he's a very straight man character, like in like, you know, the comedy sense. But it's like, no, he's an evil dude. I was like, wow. So not only did Mateo die, we find out that Detective Sato, the only reason why he was looking into all of this is because he's paid. Well, Maybe that wasn't always his intention. Maybe he wasn't always a dirty cop, but he saw an opportunity the moment he found out Nathan was alive. It's like, hey, I can take advantage of this. Because, well, he specifically when he got the video of Choke and all the others meeting, he said, like, oh, if I, like, kill Nathan and all that, like, I will probably get paid a lot. So maybe he actually did start off this with the best of intentions, but then he was like, oh, this is, there are billionaires involved, and just to keep this quiet... They'd want, you know, so they pay a lot. I mean, to be fair, they most likely would have killed you just to keep your mouth shut because you would become a loose end as well. You know, so I, I think that's something to kind of consider. But uh, once, like Mateo, uh, he's dead. Got a whole blast in his chest. So that's interesting. The one ally that... I, I, cause I'm so curious, when they were introducing the character last season, did they have that intention of making him the bad guy? Or is that just something they thought about like when they were writing this season i'm so curious you always wonder about decisions like that was like was that always the case did you like maybe you were going to lead the character one way but then you're like in between season two and three when you're writing through you're like you know what actually let's go in a different direction it just makes you wonder it's so interesting because he's always played these interesting cops because i know he was full well i think he was a complex i know i think he was a completely good cop in ultra carbon i know in i zombie he that actor played like a very compromised cop because he was working with blaine so yeah so it's like but i i swear he was actually a good cop in ultra carbon or maybe he was like a, on the slippery slope but ended up doing good he might have been good all the way through i just don't remember he might have been it was just all i think it's just about a protecting my job type of thing in ultra carbon it's been such a long time because he was only in season one, if I remember correctly. So, and it's been a while since I've seen that. But either way, tangents and all that aside. Other elements I thought was so interesting that because of Nathan's um, coming back, for him, it's like, oh, like, I'm a lot more farty. And also his sense of smell is, like, way stronger. So, uh, like, when he's with Nora and she's eating onions on her hot dog, he's biting a hot dog and he's spitting. He's like, oh, yeah, it was so delicious. Um... Like, that's going to be an interesting, uh, I'm sure that's going to be a running gag in this season of just kind of dealing with that. He's not letting Nora, well, he had the farty moment while they were undercover and he was trying to turn on like the like refreshing refreshments and uh, not refreshments, but like uh, air fresheners in the uh, bathroom. I also think this is kind of an interesting thing where we kind of got a little bit of a jealous Nora side of things where it's like, oh, this lady walked by when they were getting hot dogs and Nora kind of saw Nate kind of getting checked out. Then they were at the, uh, at Freon and it's like, oh, um, he was kind of like smiling at Elaine. She's like, really? He's like, what? I was just being polite that I'm sure that's something she's going to have to worry about. It's like, he's a little bit of a playboy and stuff like that. So it's like, right, you've got your body back. And it's like, are you really doing that? You know, we're a thing and everything. I'm kind of basically your girlfriend and you're doing that in front of me. It's like, I don't think he had any bad intentions. And I'm just so curious to see if that ends up being a thing that she has to worry about. I mean, considering like how complicated their relationship is. Because I mean, when they first fell for each other, he was still in a relationship with Ingrid. But then it like, got complicated. Um, but then it's also like, right, in season two, he was with Ingrid again, and she ended up being with Mateo, so it complicated. And so maybe some of that's kind of bleeding over into this, and she's worried, like, oh, you got a body back. Because she even made this, like I said, even that conversation of like, oh, after a month, would you get bored of me? I wonder on some level, is she worried about that? That it's like, oh, like our our romance was the will they won't they of it all plus us being separated by literal life and death that maybe that kind of kept our relationship strong and what are we outside of that now that we're in the same space fully not just me being your angel at horizon at slash lakeview that we're actual people out here in the real world we can feel and can touch we can do so much more you know so I should also like. I also thought this kind of cute. I like that in Nora's um, house or apartment, or whatever. If you when she woke up from the nightmare, I could have sworn I was like, "Is that a that looked like that was a um, 
it looked like it was a Minecraft sword on her table. I'm not sure if it was. Specifically, it looked like it was a diamond Minecraft sword. I was like, uh, yeah, diamond sword, uh, Minecraft sword. So I, I thought that was interesting. Also, like, uh, when Nathan was in Freon and he was, like, making, like, a dirt angel. Because it's like, yeah, this entire, like, uh, afterlife world is completely empty to be the first person there before anything's really there. It just looks like a, a default Windows XP background. I mean, even when he was making his snow, uh, his ground and dirt angel, and the blocks came up, they kind of reminded me of like Minecraft blocks. Uh, they're very small Minecraft blocks, uh, to some extent. Something I didn't think about when I was watching the season two finale, I was kind of, I was only thinking about like, okay, so Tinsley is obviously obsessed with Nathan, and so is Ingrid. But then I completely forgot about another person that's completely obsessed with Nathan, and that's Luke. So, at least they're still in contact, but I love that parallel of, like, right, in episode six of last season, there was kind of, it was mainly an Alicia and Nora fight, and I don't think Luke was nearly as pissed at Nathan. Like, he lets a lot of his, any frustrations he has with Nathan kind of go by the wayside immediately. So, I think that's interesting, but, because obviously he misses Nathan a lot, and, you know, um, he ends up trying to uh, find a replacement for him, which includes Dylan AI guy, specifically bartender AI guy, and the guy Nathan. It's like, we know why Nathan's there. The old man Nathan. And um, I love the AI guy's like, well, I'm programmed to basically tell you everything you want, but it's like, I can't replace him because Nathan is just pure perfect. And he's like, oh man, you're good. And it's like, oh wow. And he says something like, it's like, oh, if you're going to do an impression of somebody, who are you going to do? And he's like, well, do one of Nathan. And it's like, well, of course. Um, He's like, man, you like he he had a AI guy had some responses that were like revolving around Nathan and Luke is like, man, you're so you're so good, and Dylan being like, well, who do you want us to do an impression of? He's like, oh, of of this person, no, Nathan is like, well, of course, and Nate, old man Nathan's like, well, I've never hung around him enough to really know him, so I can't do an impression of him. Should be fine, right? He gets revoked. He's like, you know what? Never mind. Revokes AI guy and um, Dylan as well. And he's just like, oh my God. No one can replace you, Nathan. And just kind of looks to a picture of him sitting in a chair. It's like, Luke, you got some issues, homie. Once again, to be fair, as I've mentioned in previous reviews, it's like Nathan and... I mean, Nathan is friendly with other people. Obviously, he hangs around Luke the most. To be fair, I guess it's more like Luke hangs around him the most. But Luke doesn't really have any friends outside of Nathan. I mean, other than... Ingrid's grandmother, that's the only other person he's really hung out besides outside of like Nathan. But then there's also like, well, Dylan kind of once again acts as that middle ground. I've, I talked about that previously too. So why he's so obsessed with Nathan, I'll never know. But the moment we introduced the other element to the story, because I kind of got spoiled on this element to the story simply because I didn't watch the trailer. It's just because it's part of the, it's the main image that they're using to represent this season on like the apps and stuff. Like the wallpaper poster for this is an image of Nora with Nathan as well as Ingrid with Nathan. So I'm like, okay, I, I'm surprised they, I mean, it'll probably come up in episode two that Luke hasn't run into, uh, Horizon Nathan. I mean, uh, Lakeview Nathan. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was interesting that they didn't set that up, but Ingrid has. And so has Sinsley, but it makes, makes sense. She's the one that set up the whole thing. And it answers the biggest question I have being like, okay, so is this Nathan like Nathan from the very beginning of the series or what? Based on the conversations and everything, it seems like this is Nathan from up to last season but specifically him before episode four because episode four was family day and he's still in love with ingrid so i can only assume like because episode three he had that that was uh what was it uh job gerbil um ingrid and he had so much fun with her not unless this is like season one nathan in some regards because he's still so in love with ingrid uh Cause it, oh no 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 I'm 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 talking uh, myself in circles because I right because he knows Tinsley so it is definitely yeah so this is before episode four it might even be before episode three but because he's so in love with her I think it probably is like post episode three pre episode four of last season Nathan so interesting so that that complicates things even more because this is a Nathan that's still in love with Nora but he just feels like he kind of has to move on because he hasn't run into Nora since then he ran into. Nora, uh, uh, Tinsley in Nora's avatar. So that's definitely going to be interesting. 
What's going to be so interesting, too, is that uh, when Luke finds out, he's not going to immediately tell Nathan, despite them being best friends and stuff. He doesn't want Nathan to know the truth because it's like, well, that Nora's got that Nathan. I have at least this Nathan, and I'm not going to let him go because I'm sure him and Ingrid, they're both in the same vein of like they're so obsessed with Nathan, they need him. So they're probably all going to keep up this facade. I mean, it works in so many different ways. Choke kind of somewhat saw Nathan um, when they were infiltrating the building, he saw like a reflection, but he couldn't really make it out. It made him go like, you know what? Let's move up the operation. But if he runs into Nathan at, uh, in Lakeview, then he's not going to think much of it. It's like, oh, I guess I must've been imagining things. So it works on that front because he'll have no idea that you're out and about in the real world. And like I said, I think Ingrid and Luke will probably keep that definitely hushed. Cause I think they will both want you to be ignorant about it. Cause I, I thought that was so interesting to Ingrid at all. Cause where we left Ingrid at the end of season two, she was all about cloning him and everything. But then like the beginning of this episode, she's getting rid of a lot of the sexy stuff she got for his sake. And it's like, what's the point of all of this? If it wasn't, enough to like keep his attention you know i did all this for him and then she's even talking to the people trying to like clone um nathan she's like no you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna find love that I actually deserve and then she got contacted by lakeview nathan and it's like oh wait all that progress i was going to about to make i just took five steps back once again it just continues to be that journey for this character take two steps forward and it feels like you take about five steps back because she was about to have her arc of being like oh i'm about to progress i'm about to go out there and be in love with someone who deserves me who i, I deserve to be loved wholeheartedly and not have to chase after love it shouldn't be this hard to be loved i'm not hard to be loved i'm great i can find someone who loves me and i, I deserve to be loved and the moment nathan comes back it's like oh this is a Nathan without all that extra baggage. This is back when he was still madly in love with me. So she's also going to make sure she made the whole point of well, Nora, even though she got Nora's name wrong again, she was like Norma or whatever. It's like she won't stand in our way. Well, this is all you have to do is make sure that this Nathan never well, that Nathan will never find out about Nora because, well, Nora's off hanging out with the other Nathan. So it's going to be interesting bouncing between these two different storylines in that capacity. Um, but she had met up with Nathan, like she had, it's like, wait, you're calling me your love? Wait, what are you talking about? She put the clone people on hold, got into a, a, a suit and went to visit Nathan and found out, oh my God, he's missing memories. I don't know what this is, but it's like, no, we should be together. Oh, it's such a great future together. And she even told the dude, yeah, go back, continue cloning the body. They even said like, oh, the process will be even faster this time, so... This way, she'll get Nathan to herself. So it makes you wonder, will Luke end up losing two Nathans, in fact? Will um, will they end up taking... Because Tinsley can't, won't tell anyone. The only person she told was like her coworker, but her coworker was like, don't tell anyone else you lost. You, you uh, reset him, and then you uh, never mention it to anyone. So to protect her job, she's not going to admit that she lost him. So it's going to be a tie secret so but like i said she's probably going to try and get him into a new body granted she's going to have to handle that a little bit differently because it's like well you already tried it once telling him the truth but to be fair that was a nathan that went through episodes four to what up to that point that was episode six so all that you know plus nora coming back it, it was a lot right but it's like if you make sure him and nora never meet or maybe even talk about it or he doesn't find out about the other nathan then he'll be more likely to kind of get um download into that body once again we know it's not perfect so how that's gonna work out i don't know because that nathan will eventually die too because the the downloading process is not perfect there's still bugs in it like I said, for a moment, I was actually kind of proud of Inger. I was like, wow, so this is where your storyline's going. And then immediately, like I said, it just went, nope, she's backtracking. So it's definitely going to be interesting, like I said, bouncing between the two, like Nathan and the storylines between the two Nathans in the real world and in um, in um, Lakeview. Um, when will they become aware of each other's existence? Stuff like that. It's definitely going to be interesting to see... Uh, where the next episode takes us with all this. Obviously, uh, there were two episodes released. I believe it's going to be two episodes every week, maybe? Um, I think this season's eight episodes, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be mistaken, so do forgive me. But uh, I'm excited to see where this next episode takes us with all of this. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.